Hundreds of NASCAR races are posted on YouTube, but some races are so rare it's questionable if the footage even exists. Some of these races may be buried in archives, but others may have never been recorded. This list goes beyond races that simply aren't on YouTube, but includes significant events that have never even been seen partially in NASCAR-produced documentaries. And so these are the top 10 lost NASCAR TV broadcasts. From 1968 to 1972, the Grand American Series was a tour for pony cars such as Camaros, Mustangs, and Firebirds. On April 8, 1972, ABC had live coverage of a 100-lap race from Bowman Gray Stadium. Jim Pascal beat David Pearson for the victory. In April 1963, a local television station in Richmond, Virginia broadcast live qualifying of the cup race at the Richmond Fairgrounds track. Despite the race being held shortly after, only qualifying was shown on television. Viewers at home saw Rex White beat David Pearson and Joe Weatherly for the pole. In March 1964, qualifying was again televised, and viewers saw Ned Jarrett post the fastest time. The local TV broadcasts are not believed to have survived. The 1996 truck race at Nazareth was initially scheduled to be shown on CBS, but was delayed by rain. CBS left before the race went back green, leaving it untelevised for several days. Four days later, the conclusion of the race was shown on TNN at 8 p.m., but because the race was quickly moved to a different channel at an obscure time, the broadcast hasn't been found. And one of the most talked about stock car races of the year, the NASCAR Sportsman 300. CBS broadcast the 1979 Daytona 500, but also aired most other races that week as well. In addition to the Bush Clash and Twin 125s, they also showed the ARCA race won by Kyle Petty, another lost broadcast shown in April of that year. But the Sportsman race, marred by a fiery crash, wasn't broadcast until August of 1979. While clips of the wreck exist, the broadcast itself hasn't been found. The 1976 Dixie 500 is notable for the crash Dale Earnhardt had in it. On lap 270, Dick Brooks crashed hard in turn three and tore out a stretch of guardrail. As he slid down the track, Earnhardt hit him and flipped three times. The race was broadcast the following Saturday on CBS's Sports Spectacular. Despite the violence of the crash early in Earnhardt's career, no footage has been seen of it since. The 1988 Miller High Life 500 from Pocono is known for the crash that ended Bobby Allison's career. A broadcast under 90 minutes is on YouTube, but an even longer version is missing. A tape-delayed two-and-a-half-hour broadcast was shown at 6 o'clock that night on the Financial News Network. The obscure extended broadcast has yet to be found. In only the second trip to Talladega, the 1970 Alabama 500 was the first points-paying cup race broadcast live. Before this race, events were shown delayed and edited. ABC joined the race around halfway at 5 p.m. and aired the last hour and a half opposite CBS's coverage of the Masters Golf Tournament. The broadcast went 15 minutes beyond its window because of a rain delay and was considered a failure because ABC didn't know who was leading the race. The announcers assumed Bobby Isaac was winning and were stunned when Pete Hamilton was given the checkered flag. Because the race went long, ABC left the track before confirming with certainty that Hamilton was the winner. Despite the broadcast problems, it still earned more viewers than the Masters, and was the first of several live broadcasts done that year. Before the 1982 season, NASCAR rearranged the Sportsman Series into a national tour, which became today's NASCAR Xfinity Series. The very first race for what was then the Bush Series was held at Daytona, and was won by Dale Earnhardt. A two-and-a-half-hour tape-delayed broadcast was shown on the USA Network on March 27th. USA also broadcast the race in 1983 and 1984, but both of those are lost as well. Known for the terrible crash that eventually claimed the life of Glenn Fireball Roberts, the 1964 World 600 was broadcast by NBC one week after it was run. The Crash Marred Race was aired as a half-hour broadcast the following Saturday, which was ironically the same day that Eddie Sachs and Dave McDonald died in a crash at the Indy 500. Other videos and films of the race exist, but the NBC broadcast does not. 
At 3 Eastern time on January 31st, 1960, 17 million viewers tuned in to watch the first live broadcast of a NASCAR race. Hosted by legendary broadcaster Walter Cronkite, the telecast showed a qualifying race that determined the pole position for the Daytona 500. Also shown was a compact car race held on the road course, which was won by Marvin Panch. Two weeks later, NBC's Today Show aired a special four-lap race for the top six cars qualified for the Daytona 500 using Autolite spark plugs. Johnny Bochamp beat Ned Jarrett by inches to win. Because of their age, neither broadcast is believed to exist.